Prusa legs. What comes to mind when I say that? Is it Joseph Prusa's legs? I don't blame you, but we're not talking about those. We're talking about these. It's a base for the Prusa Mini that you can print yourself, and I really hope I printed them right because we're gonna put it together. Let's get to it. There you are. Welcome back. Like we said, this is the, the Prusa Mini base. It's four legs for your Prusa Mini, and it also holds the power supply. It holds the USB sticks. It can extend the USB port. It puts the power switch in a different spot. It can hold the filament sensor if you have one. It holds the unused build plates, and you can mount a roll of Prusa Mint under it, and it feeds it in. It makes it look cool, kind of slightly more usable in a way. You don't have that power supply dangling off anywhere. And so what I've done is I've printed all of the parts, and we're gonna put them together. Ready to form Voltron. The Prusa Mini base is by user David Warboss. David Warboss. It's a really neat thing. It's available on prusaprinters.org and there's a cool little video that goes along with it. I'm not gonna show you right here, but I highly suggest you go take a look at it. Let's see, there's David Warboss. Hi, David. Here's the blog entry, and this blog entry actually takes us step by step, telling us what we'll need and how to put all this this together. Um, it lists the parts that are there. They've got black, they've got orange. That's cool. I've got blue and I've got 3DPN vanilla bean ice cream. We'll talk about the filaments, but I think my color combo is gonna be much cooler. St oh, oh, what did I do? What did I just click? No, no, no. Let me clear it off. Let me remove support and let me kind of show you the parts that are gonna go into this thing. These are the parts. We don't have to go over them too heavily because you're gonna see them as I'm putting it together. These right here are little motor covers. They don't make it go any faster. They just make it look cooler. So those are gonna go on the, the steppers. 3 dpn vanilla ice cream right there. Here's a tray and it's got a bunch of hexagons, <laughs> a whole bunch of them. These are the legs over here and they have uh, these little hexagon decorations. These printed hexagons in 3 dpn vanilla ice cream, they add the decorations. They are decorative. More decoration. Uh, well, except for a couple. So this one here, this slides in and it provides storage for USB sticks. Right there, you can see there's a little bit of filament kind of curved up and that provides some tension. So when you put the stick in there, blizzard test, it, it doesn't fall out. That's a really neat way of doing it. You can see that this has the space or the cutouts or whatever you want to call it for the USB extension. This is the one I got, got it from Amazon. And the one they listed on the website uh, was sold out. And so I'll have to hot glue it or 3D print something for that. But I, th I believe this is where the USB extension goes, just, just like in there. But uh, functional and decorative. This is going to be a little tray that allows you to, to hold things. Cool. This is a piece that actually decorates this. Look at that. I mean, looks kind of good, right? The blue, the, the 3DPN vanilla bean. Just get together. <laughs> this is gonna hold the power supply. And if you look, when I first, I was like, what the heck? There's a print problem. But I looked at the model and that's what it's supposed to look like. Here's the test. So it should fit in there. I don't think that's gonna fit. Oh no. Ugh. There are two versions of the Prusa Mini power supply. Mine is one of the original Prusa Minis. I know that um, the Prusa Mini Plus has a different sized power supply. I thought I printed the right one. I don't know if it's gonna fit. Like, I think it's gonna break if I put it in there. I mean, should I just hit it? Do it. Hey, hey, look at that, it fit. Oh my gosh. Will it come out? And it will come out. Okay, good. So it looks to be this is the right one. This attaches the power supply to the back of the Prusa Mini. Right now, it's just a big brick that kind of hangs out and does nothing. It's got a blue light that comes on. It's kind of neat. Uh, you don't need to see it, and if it can take up less space, that's gonna be optimal. And so this mounts the power supply to the back of the Prusa Mini, and that's kind of handy. So, and we verified it works. These are the actual legs that, that go together. So it's kind of like, Kind of like that, like that somehow. And then, and then the mini is gonna be just right on top of that. There are supports that were generated by Prusa Slicer. And I think the prints did well. This is Atomic's Carbon Fiber Pet G. In Prusa Slicer, I used Prusa Mint Pet G defaults. And I, I think it came out great. 
I don't do a lot of PETG printing, so I'm not sure how, how supports work. Let's, let's just take a look. Oh, they come out great. So here's what I wanna do before, I'm gonna, I gotta get the support off all of this and we'll start the process according to the manual that we have on the TV we never use until now. Now we're cooking with gas, right? Let's just, let's get to it. Okay, step-by-step -step assembly instructions. Oh, disconnect the box. There we go, disconnected. <laughs> That's step one. We're done, break. Unscrew the front part of the Y-axis and I can do a three millimeter and a two and a half millimeter hex key. There we go. Look at that, it comes off just like that. So with this off, um, you know, when you're building the Prusa Mini and it comes together and you got to attach this to this and then you're done. Um, one of the interesting things, a lot of people, I know Tom, Filament Frenzy and others, uh, this piece they will reprint and then do it multicolor. And what that does, it gives it some cool effects. Time for the next step. Place the printer sideways and remove all the anti-vibration pads. Put them into cutouts on each, oh, 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 okay. Okay, so these pads, okay. So they're gonna go on each of the pieces. Look at that. I like that. Oh, that's cool. Cool, pads, done. Put them into cutouts and each of them, remove one screw from the bottom of the Z-axis extrusion. Oh, it's this one, okay. Okay, so they want this pad off. Urgh. A little squeaky. Squeaky eeky. Step four, slide the rear right leg onto the Y-axis extrusion. So we're supposed to slide, slide it onto the extrusion. Oh, let's see, we take this out, okay. So we take that out and then this gets slid onto the extrusion, which, why am I having problems with this? Oh, okay. So slid is maybe not the ultra correct term. There we go. See like that. Front leg, that's gonna be this one. Well, where the heck fire does that go? Does that go up in there? <laughs> Some people have skills. Some people have really cool skills that allow them to build things. I, I, I'm not one of those. Okay, okay. I heard, I heard crunchy noises. Really, it wants to be up in there, huh? Okay. I'm screwing it in. Okay. Look at that. Like I did it, I did it, I did it. <laughs> Step six, attach both front and rear left legs as well. No screw is needed. Oh good, I was tired of screwing things. And they just slide onto the extrusion. So where the pads were, it's still a little sticky. It makes it a little bit difficult to get things into place. Oh yeah! Felt real, real good. It worked! Boy, they're in too. They are like in. If something's in, and you're like, boy, that's in, that's in. Screw the front part of the Y-axis and Y-axis idler back in. Huzzah. It just took some finagling. It just took a little bit of, a little bit of uh, a little bit of uh. I don't know if uh is a technical term, but I sure gave it some uh. Have a look at that. Like so far, that's cool. That just, it looks really, really cool. And I know this isn't gonna make it necessarily print any better, but looks can be important. And that's why this is cool. I'll reconnect the display box. Okay, I forgot to do that. But you know what, I can do that just like this. Well, that's not it. There's, there's a lot more. I mean, we're gonna move the power switch. We're gonna move the USB cable. And we gotta put the decorations and the shelves and the motor covers. Okay, so let's just, let's see what's next. Um, reconnected, okay. So, oh, so then there's a box that goes in and it looks like it goes in right here. Cool, so what that does, that, um, um, that covers the display cable and it actually makes it kind of a, a useful little, little area to put stuff. And uh, the tray that was holding all the hexagons a lot of them, that goes under. <laughs> Look at that. So now, as the bed's moving back and forth, if there's tools or something you need, they can be put into a tray 
uh, a tray right there. But that's not the end of it. Now we have to do inserts Oh, in the front legs. Okay, so this one goes in like that. Okay. There we go. That must be looking cool. It's, it's in front of me. I can't see it. So see right down here, right there and right there. It shows these open-ended slot things. And that's not what we want because we're continuing on. And what we're going to do is put in the place for the USB cord and for the power switch. A little bit advanced. It's not required for this because honestly, they're easily accessible on the side. But what's the fun in only going halfway? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Open the electronics box. Okay. Well, let's do that. So what you can do is move the power switch and then solder on some, some extra wire, which is fine, right? You can do that, or you can just use completely new wire. Okay, I got the power switch out, and it is super tiny wires, jeez. So here's the power switch, and it looks like it has, these aren't spade connectors, whatever these are called. They're these style connectors right here. So I bought a bunch of these from Amazon. So I'm just gonna see if they fit over the intended target. They do, sweet. The wires are this long and they have to go from this electronics box, snake through here and out to the front, which means we're gonna make some longer wires. And this is a crimp tool. Look at this, we, I've got wire cutters, a crimp tool. We're in business. This is kind of exciting. Um, having those connectors on is great. I mean, they're fantastic because uh, it doesn't require any soldering and I have everything I need to do here. I don't know if the Mini Plus has that or if there are different connectors used on the Mini Plus. This is the original Mini from the review. So your mileage may vary, but for now, uh, we just need to use some wire and some connectors and we'll be good to go. Uh, so they want 50 centimeters of cable. I have that here, 50. And, oh, just a little extra. Just a little extra. This is a uh, 16 gauge, 100 feet, red and black, low voltage cable. Yeah, I got this from Amazon. I'll put the link to my stuff down in the description. Strip it out. And I'm gonna twist it up and then I get out here we go, one of my connectors right here. Now I've got, these are for crimping right here. I do have a set of actual crimpers at home. Um, I just don't have them here with me, but if I crimp right here, and then I try to pull it off, we have a good connection. It's actually working, this is fantastic. So the power connectors are kinda right there. It feeds up and out and it goes through these back legs. And then there's a little path that we ride on here. So I'll show you that in just a sec, but I do have to put on these pieces in the back. Um, I've, I've got the wire hooked up over here. Before I put the ends on, I'm gonna bring it out here just cause it might be easier. Secure. So it's gonna come through this little opening right here. So it shows the power cable going through or the, the switch uh, power switch cable going through, but uh, this little part down here, this little black part, that's the USB extension. Mine is blue. Uh, so I'm gonna plug it in on the side. I don't have a right angle connector. They recommended one and they linked to one on Amazon. Would have been nice, but it's not required and it was sold out, so I got this one. So once plugged in, I can just feed it through this section right next to the power switch wire and out it comes. See, with a right angle connector right here, you would uh, have it kind of face down. It'd be a little bit cleaner, but it's still gonna work just fine. Now that we have these through, we're gonna put the two pieces in here, connect these up, and then we should be good. Let's go to the next step. Oh, we got some stuff here. Okay, in the video, let's see. We extend the power cable by soldering and heat, that's fine. Press both cables into the zigzag and then thread them all the way through the holes in the front. Okay, there's a zigzag over here. <laughs> we're gonna zig and we're gonna zag. Ah, there it is. You see it wiggling? Yeah. There it is. That is a thick cable. I don't know if that cable's gonna wanna spend much time in there. Ow, oh God, I just bent my thumbnail backward. Okay, when you go through and do this yourself, you may run into an issue like this and it's solvable with, I'm sure, you know, zip ties, hot glue, take your pick. But honestly, like this USB cable sticks out to here. It's probably gonna be fine if I have slack back here. I'm not too worried about it. Oh, now we get to use these. So three M3 by 30. 
These are to hold it in place. Here we go. So this shows the USB extension going into this piece here, and then these three screws going in to hold it into place. And I can fit it through, but it just kind of hangs out. So what I want it to be, is just a little bit back. I'll try to use the screws they recommend. So I only did one and it's holding it into place. So we're just gonna, huh. yeah, <laughs> okay. Is that cool? I can't see, is that cool? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna trust you. Last and certainly not least is the power switch. I'm gonna have to turn this, I apologize. Okay, so then we can do this. There we go, look at that. Now with the power switch, I'm gonna make it so up is on. I can connect up these two and then we pop it right back in. Maximum effort. There we go. Oh, now, now the power supply, right? Okay, we did this, fed it through. Uh, we don't have the filament sensor. So apparently these are supposed to go on. There we go. And they can just rotate in place. And then if there's a sheet you're not using, there we go. So a filament spool can fit under there. There's a sheet right there. I'll put this one on just cause there we go. So last and not least, certainly not least is this big old power supply. I guess I got to cover the electronics too. Uh, I'll do that real quick. And then, and then power supply time. Oh, you know what? You know, before we do the power supply, let's put a couple motor caps on. What do you say? I, I, I think they just complete the look. So there we go. Okay, so this, this one that you're seeing here, this is for the Mini Plus power supply. And while I've got the old one, it's going to attach to two screws on the extrusion and then zip ties are gonna hold it in place. That's not so bad. So this is where the power supply is gonna mount to and there's two mount points. It's this screw and this screw right here. See, just like that. So I'm gonna take these out. There we go. <laughs> I have to get them started, I need leverage. Okay, that's in. So you can see here, it shows that the mini, or the power supply cable here is uh, wrapped up with some zip ties. You put some zip ties through here, you bunch that up and then it goes right back into there. So let's, let's do that. And we verified this fit before, just like so. Do I have zip ties? I do. Look at that, that's secure. That's held in place really, really well. And look, it's still compatible with the Matt Stoltz handle. Jeez, this takes on a whole new mini-ing, a whole new mini-ing. <laughs> I tried to do a, you get it? Mini, whole new mini, mini-ing. You are a sad, strange little man. So filament stored here can then be brought up this way through this Bowden tube. And I've got some extra Capricorn tubing that I could put here instead and feed it down here to make it easier to load up in the front. And it's operational. Be sure to run the first print calibration and all that, which I still need to do. Can you verify that switch is in the off position, please? Sweet. So if I did everything right, three, two, one. Yeah, we did it. Oh man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look at this from the front. Oh, that looks good, that looks good. All that's left really are these hexagons and I'm gonna be honest with you, it doesn't make it go any faster. But it sure looks cooler. I might have to glue those into place. So look at that, we've actually gone through and I would say upgraded our Prusa Mini. So this little Prusa Mini base is available for free download from prusaprinters.org by David Warboss. What a freaking cool last name. The legs, all the blue parts are, where's my filament? Oh yeah, it's under the machine. All blue filament is um, Atomics Carbon Fiber Pet G and all of the non-blue filament is the printed solid Jesse 3DPN Vanilla, Ice, Vanilla Bean Ice Cream PLA. I love both of these filaments. I'm just really happy with this. It looks really, really cool. It looks, it looks like a product. This looks like something that should be for sale. I think is the way I'm going with it. This just looks cool. Well, I hope showing you that I did this gave you the inspiration or the kick or, or the, the boost to know that you could do this as well. If you've done this with your mini, I would love to see it. Tag me on the Twitters. I'm at Joel Telling or the Instagrams or the TikToks or the whatever. Beyond all that, really, uh, I'm just, I'm really excited with this. 
Like, it's cool. Thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. Don't forget to hug each other more. Print more cool things. And as always, <laughs> high five. <laughs> I really love this. I, don't, I can't explain it. It's just so cool. Yeah, it's cool. It's a cool model, man. Great design. Great design. David Warboss. What a name. Right?